What's up gamers, it's time for the Sandbox news. You're not gonna believe this, Twitch integration. Sandbox has Twitch integration and it's insane. You can actually like have the chat do things, like let's say you're doing like a VR horror game and you wanna like have enemies spawn with a Twitch command, that could be done now. Except it could have always been done, but it's much easier now. Crazy hoggers. This is not limited to Twitch. It will also support other streaming platforms like YouTube. They also added basic graphics settings in the menu, such as FPS limit and texture filtering. That's pretty insane if you ask me. They had no settings menu literally a month ago, but now they have a settings menu. Just wow, wow. A thing they added to the hammer editor is a new blender material. It's like a shader thingy. Before you could only have like two way shader texture things, but now you can have five ways and it looks so cool. Look at that. You see that clip? That is, that's beautiful. Like I can't wait to do that to my maps. Mind break part three. Wow. Oh, I should mention that the new dev vlog for August came out. And if you scroll down, you'll see a lot of VR updates, including someone uh, oh wait, I mean myself, uh, added full body tracking support to Sandbox for VR chat avatars. Wow, Branchan is in the dev vlog. That's, that's so cool. Branchan, do you know what Branchan is? Branchan's like the best avatar ever. Wow, I love it. They also added a bunch of new physics props like new street furniture and pizza. Very bendy, delicious looking pizza. Like, probably 8K textures. I don't know if that's true, but wow, insane. You can now also adjust the tick rate for servers and time scale in C Sharp. That means you can change how many ticks the server gets sent and received from a game mode. Before it was locked at 60. Um, uh, something about, like, being more better, uh, if you raise the number, but at the cost of, like, processing for the server. Yeah, I don't really understand it, but I bet Gavaridos does, which is me, totally. This is useful for things such as the RTS game mode. It can be lowered so the game can run at a higher FPS while having more stuff going on. An intense competitive FPS game like Counter-Strike though, might want to use a higher tick rate, possibly up to 128. Any pro CSGO fans in the audience? Wow! Oh, me, myself, Gavarados, and definitely Gavarados is all- I'm in the dev vlog. That's crazy. I, I know I said that kind of earlier with the Brad Chan thing because I made the full body tracking thing, but I'm in it. That's why you should subscribe to this YouTube channel because I'm very important. They also added direct animation sequence playback. You can directly play an animation on a model instead of having to create an animograph for it. I don't know what that is, but it's probably something crazy. This is useful for game modes with a lot of animated models being rendered at once, like RTS. It's a lot easier to just create an animograph for your animations. There are also limitations with doing it in the model editor, so if you have layered animations, they all need to be the same length. If they're not, they'll get sped up or slowed down to match the base animation. Crazy. Just, I, I can't believe it. Future of gaming animations or something. I think that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like, comment, and subscribe. You should watch my zombie video. I made a game mode for it. It's insane. Oh my god.